This is Twit. Gone are the days of applications that solely work in an offline fashion. Eventually, they have to connect to the internet to either recharge or even get an update. Now, with Apple's latest Big Sur release, they have created a more strict dependency on the internet with their app verification process. Now, the question is, is this a bad thing? We'll get into that. Now, last week, Max users actually everywhere began complaining of a crippling slowdown when actually opening their applications. Now, the cause, online certificate checks Apple performs each time a user opens an app not downloaded from the App Store. With the mass upgrade to Big Sur, it seems caused the Apple servers responsible for those checks to slow to a crawl. Now, Apple quickly fixed the slowdown, but even bigger worries soon replaced concerns about paralyzed Macs. Now, vast amounts of personal data Apple and possibly others can glean from Macs performing certificate checks each time a user opens an app that didn't come from the App Store. They actually send this data out. Now, there was a little reason to view the certificate checks as a privacy grab for people who understand what's happening behind the scenes. Now, to be sure, Apple on Monday actually published a support article that should actually stop the lingering worries, but you should go read it. It's pretty interesting. Now, before Apple allows an app into the App Store, it must first pass a review that vets its security. Now, users can configure this and their Mac OS feature known as Gatekeeper to allow only these apps that are approved. And then they can actually choose a setting that allows installation of third-party apps as long as the apps are signed with a developer certificate issued by Apple. Now, to ensure the certificate hasn't been revoked, Mac OS uses OCSP. Now, it's short for Industry Standard Online Certificate Status Protocol, and it checks the validity of that certificate. Now, the any certificate that is valid it authenticates a website or a piece of software sounds simple, but it has long presented problems industry-wide that aren't easily to solve. Now, the original uses were the use of certificate revocation lists, but as the list grew, their size actually prevented them from working effectively. Now, CRL gave way to a CSP, which performed the check on remote servers. Now, they were criticized originally because they were actually sending unencrypted data across the wires. Now, they fixed that, but they still send the data. Now, fortunately, server outages actually can still paralyze millions of people trying to install these apps or even open those apps, visit sites, or even sometimes check their email. Now, Gatekeeper is designed to make it easy for less experienced users to steer clear of apps that are known to be malicious. Now, to make use of Gatekeeper, users have to send a certain amount of information to Apple. The question is... Is it too much data? All right, I want to bring my co host in here. First, I want to throw it to you, Curtis. Now, Apple isn't known for its cloud services. Now, scaling up, it might be enough here. But is it a good move for Apple to depend on this external service, or is it one in the wrong direction for them? Well, I suspect that this is one of those things that is a short-term solution. Uh, I think it is exactly the right thing to do to scale up their service uh, capacity right now, because this is a problem that must be solved. Um, you know, consumers have demanded that applications be more secure, that data storage, that data communications all be more secure. And the chief tool we have to throw against this is the certificate. Um, so in responding to what consumers have said they want, Apple ran into problems. They've solved it with external capacity in the long term. I think that Apple will want to have that capability in-house. So this is one where I suspect that in 12 to 18 months' time, we're going to see Apple rather quietly begin to move more of this in-house. I, I suspect that most consumers and even many companies will never know the difference. And that's just the way that Apple is going to want it to be. Right, right. Now, Bam, from a security perspective, just-in-time verification of app validity is in the user's best interest. Now, Apple really need – does they really need the data they're collecting, though? I think they're still collecting user you know, versions of the OS um, when they updated, a bunch of extra data. Um, and they're saying it's respon they need it. They need this data to be able to help protect them. Um, isn't just a certificate check enough? Well, I, w I wish a certificate check was enough. Um, but what we know about public key cryptography is that it, it really only provides a, a limited context on, on what's actually there, right? So all we're getting with basic public key uh, cryptography and, uh, you know, OCSP in particular is just validating that the certificate's still valid, um, 
that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the person using it is using it in a valid way, right? Uh, and that's and that's the trick, right? Is is you know, and maybe and I think maybe the argument can be made that that they probably should be doing more checking on the front end before apps get into the app store, before apps get you know distributed. So, and I know that Apple has done a fair amount in that regard. And most, most of the uh, maintainers of app stores, whether it's Google play or Microsoft's own application store, they do a lot to vet, you know, third party developers and their submissions into those stores. However, uh, the, the problem still remains is, you know, anybody can get a valid certificate, um, you know, using things like let's encrypt and so on. So, you know, I, I, not knowing exact the exact details of the implementation, I'm hard pressed to um, challenge uh, Apple when they say, "Well, we need a little bit more information." If it's not PII information, and if they can, you know, and I'm and I know that you know the penalties for running afoul of storing PII data, not to mention if they were ever you know caught with it or breached with it, uh, are are significant. So. Uh, you you have to you know extend a little trust and and that's that sounds a little bit funny coming from the paranoid security guy but at some <laughs> point you, you kind of have to trust these systems to function the way they're supposed to uh, but I imagine security researchers in in the you know coming weeks and months are going to be taking a close look at this practice from Apple and dissecting just what information they're collecting and and is it actually necessary but if it's down to things like device version operating system version and some other uh, contextual data, then then I'm inclined to trust that it is necessary uh, to, to validate not only that the certificate is valid, but how it's being used and who's using it is also valid. Right. Yeah, I agree. I mean, these closed application stores, like obviously Apple being the number one here, the Windows Store is another one. Um, obviously, Google is uh, leaving a lot of open uh, to be desired for their store, uh, some of the things that they're not checking, uh, especially on updates. But I think this whole idea of verifying certificates uh, and making sure they're you know capturing these these Apple and or Google or Microsoft signed things um, is in the best interest of the user. Obviously, um, the question is whether they need to be cloud connected to do that is really the one thing that uh, I'm wondering. There might be some other additional things that Apple wants to do with the service later on, uh, which is why they made it cloud-connected. Um, so that that might be the interesting thing to see how this evolves over time. 